neighbor's tree fell today which is good and bad news it took out her fence and not mine didn't fall in her garage didn't hurt anybody and I got a harvest of pheasant backs so chop one of these up here but these smaller ones here are the ones you really want to get these, these little teeny ones and this in here is real super tender but uh, these bigger ones you got to clean them up so what you do is you ice cream scoop works pretty good for this and if the spores are coming off tough it's probably too tough to eat like right here these ones are kind of coming off a little tough so we'll just probably just eat the ends wherever the spores come off at so I just pull them back to about right there and I can feel resistance on the knife with that but uh, you can see that the texture is uh, almost like squid I guess when it's cooked well, this is coming off easier because this is a smaller one just take these spores off they can tend to get rubbery and the texture is a little weird too so we'll just slice these real super thin because they're bigger but this one's cutting very easily There's, it's not drawn on the knife or anything so that's all I got off of that one so now we'll come down here and take off this next one it and we got about half of it so we'll see how the spores come off of this one there we go see, get this one started and I can probably just peel it back there we go perfect and it leaves this real tender stuff underneath and this smells just like watermelon cucumber Kind of a mixture of the two. Okay. All right, let's move on to the other half of that. The other half of that same mushroom. This is all really tender, super tender pheasant back. Dryads, saddle. Pull these spores back. Oops. Grabbed a little too much of that one. That's okay. We'll just pull that off. Got plenty here. These are better when they're about maybe the size of a softball, but uh, you can eat around the edges of them. You can make stock out of them too if you want to make some stock. You can take these great big ones and just simmer them in some chicken stock or just make mushroom stock out of it to make mushroom soup if you want. It'll give you that flavor without the texture and then you can use, use some portobellas or something to make your mushroom soup. That cuts just super easy so I'm just going real nice and thin. And the, the, the tougher it is the thinner you want to go but you as soon as the knife starts drawing, you just uh, let it go. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this stuff. And we'll work on this great big one here. I might be able to get a little bit off of that. This is a huge saddle, and if any of it's edible, I'll be surprised. But we'll see. Oh yeah, spores are coming off. I can feel right here where, where the tender starts and the tough stops. It's pretty much like right around this edge here. So we're going to go ahead and, and this little bit of stuff here isn't going to be any big deal, but I'll trim it. I don't mind that little bit around the edges. Just nice and thin. Knife's going right through it, no problem. No problem. 
problem. So I'm just going to slice about right here. Right there. That's all pretty tough. So you're really only getting a little bit off the ends of these great big ones, but it's edible. It's really tasty. Alright, we'll turn them over and slice them this way. So you can see the prettiest part of the mushroom. Real nice. Okay, and last little bit. And that is prepping the pheasant backs. So uh, what I'll do now is I'm going to cook them up. I'll show you how I do that. All right, we're going to take these uh, pheasant backs. We're going to chop an onion. Everybody chops their onions different. This is how I do it. I don't like messing around trying to peel the skin off. I just get right to it. Done. And done. And I'm going to do real thin dices. stays together and you can chop the rest of it whenever you want but this will give me two different styles of dices one long and one short take that out of there and finish it up all right onions done and we'll work on this garlic here One's done. That one's done. And that one's done. And we're just going to do a little rough dice on these. Don't really have to do too much cross dicing because they're already smashed. So. All right. We're going to take this to the pan. And we're going to drizzle in just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. In goes our onions. saute these onions for just a few minutes just till they're translucent won't take very long because they're really small dices they're already starting to turn all right so we're going to do a little bit of seasoning right now a little bit of salt and it'll start getting the water out of the onions a teeny bit of uh, cayenne pepper don't get carried away just a little bit some fresh brown black pepper smell of frying onions and butter mm. all right these are just about perfect already they're just because they got to go for a while yet so we just want to saute just a little bit we'll let them go for about 30 more seconds garlic now and we're just going to cook it for about one minute don't have to go too long mm, garlic coming out of the onion smells good yeah beautiful
And that's just about perfect. We don't want our garlic to get too cooked. And then we're going to start dropping in our pheasant backs. We've got a nice big bowl of them here too, but this is just about right. I don't want too much oil, but uh, we're going to do a liquid oil here and then we're going to cook it back down. And what I mean by that is we're going to put some chicken stock in here right now. We're not going to really saute these mushrooms. We'll saute them at the end. There we go. By the time all that fluid cooks down, these will be nice and tender. You got to keep liquid on them at all times, really, or they'll toughen right up. And then just brown them a little bit at the end. And uh, that's where we're going to pick up the video because this would uh, probably take forever. So this will probably take an hour, is what I'm thinking here, just uh, messing around. Uh, I'll time it and let you know when we come back. Here we are at about 10 minutes, and they're simmering away real nice. And I figure this is probably going to be more like 20 minutes, not an hour, but we'll see. You really got to tell by the tenderness of the mushroom as you go along. Uh, but uh, we'll see where they're at in a little while. Well, here we are at 20 minutes, and we're simmering away real nice. They're, uh, they're start just now starting to get tender. Um, some of the bigger pieces are... getting very tender so I'm figuring probably 20 more minutes and they'll be just right and uh, then we'll finish up what we're doing here all right we're at about 30 minutes and these are just starting to get sizzly you can see most of the liquid is cooked off the chicken broth is taking on a real nice dark color and uh, well I figure I'm gonna let these go 10 more minutes and then I'm gonna drain what's left of the liquid and um, set that aside and uh, then I'm going to saute these in just a little bit of butter to brown them up a little bit. Probably wondered what I meant when I was going to fry some cheese. This is what I'm doing. It's going to be part of the assembly of the final dish. I'm just going around and making sure it doesn't stick. In fact, I can probably flip it now. And say that looks real nice. So you'll just have to wait and see what I do with this. All right, so here's our plate, and being as we got a watermelon kind of a flavor and, and uh, smell, I thought uh, watermelon would be good to serve this with. So we got a little watermelon here. We got some toast, and here's our fried cheese. So we're going to take our scrambled eggs and just put them on top of the cheese. And I fried the eggs in the in the uh, little bits that were left over from the mushrooms so that's what's that's what's in the eggs put our mushrooms on top put a few over here and then uh, I don't know about you but I like a little bit of hot sauce on my eggs so we'll do a little habanero Tabasco. A few drops will do you. So that is how I prepare pheasant backs. They're pretty simple to do. They just take a little while and a little patience to get them tender. But once you do, they're really good. I'll do just a little pinch of salt. I even like salt in my watermelon a little bit. And that's it. So there it is, pheasant backs with uh, scrambled eggs and toast.